Hey everybody, this is Mark with I Will Tech One Tweet, and in this video, we're gonna be checking out Things 3. A few years ago, we made an in-depth review on Things and what it has to offer. In this video, we're going to talk about all the new features that has changed with Things 3. First of all, the icon has changed. Only on the Mac side, though, do we find a smaller, different icon. On the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch, everything is exactly the same. But inside the app, we find a ton of new features and changes. It has a completely new look and user interface. Everything's much more flat and modern. However, the functionality has remained largely unchanged. On the left, we have all of our usual means of organizing our to-dos. There's different dates of when they can be snoozed until. We have our logbook for completed. There's trash. And we also have all of our projects that we're working on. New is the icon next to your project. It will show a pie chart of how complete the project is, giving you a sense of how far along you are. That's actually really nice. You can tell right away how complete it is. Inside of your project, it looks fairly similar. You can add your to-dos, dates, and more. New is the ability to create headings and section off your project into smaller projects, if you will. That's a really nice feature and allows you to organize things a little bit better that you couldn't have done in previous versions. Back to the inbox, we can add a new to-do by clicking the plus icon. Then you can add titles and notes, move it to a certain date, add tags, add a deadline of when it's due. But new in this version is the ability to add a checklist, so you can essentially add a to-do within a to-do. It's pretty neat and really useful at times. On the bottom of the screen, we can click the arrow to move it to a different project. There is a trash to delete it, and we can repeat the due dates, duplicate it, convert it to a project, which is really nice, and share it. One thing that really bugs me about this new version on the Mac side is that when you close the window, it goes right back to the today view when it's opened. Now, when you used to close it and didn't quit the app on the previous version, it came to where you left off. So for me, I always like to go back to my inbox, but every time I close the window on this version, it goes back to today. So that's something a little bit frustrating and I really hope that they do fix in a future update. On the iPad, we see pretty much the same thing. This time, however, the sidebar stays in portrait mode, not just landscape. And with the mobile versions, you can even drag the new to-do button to anywhere in your inbox or to the sidebar to create a new to-do in that part, which is really awesome and super useful at times as well. There's also now the ability to make a quick search just by pulling down in the inbox and typing in whatever you want. On the iPhone, we got one new 3D touch action. On top of the widget new to-do button and today actions, we now have the ability to make a quick search. Like the iPad, the iPhone version functions exactly the same. And there isn't really any differences other than the 3D touch. The Apple Watch app remains largely unchanged with pretty much no new features or design changes. In fact, it's exactly the same. So if you'd like to learn more about the Apple Watch version, you should watch our previous video where we go in depth on everything. Overall, I'm a big fan of this update. The new design is a welcome change and I'm loving all of the new features. It's pretty cool to have sub to do's as well as the ability to section off projects. The only thing I don't like is how the window behaves on the Mac. But other than that, I really love this app and highly recommend it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, leave a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. This is Mark with iHelpTech1Tweet, and I'll see you in the next one.